Hey guys, welcome back to another Circuit Basics video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the TDA 2003 stereo amplifier I built. It's a really good sounding mid to low power amp that's perfect for bookshelf speakers or computer speakers. The amp I built outputs about 8 watts per channel, which sounds low, but it's actually more than enough power for listening at home. I'll start by showing you the schematic and explain what some of the important components in the circuit do. Then I'll show you how I designed the PCB and talk about some important things to keep in mind when designing an amplifier's PCB layout. At the end of the video, I'll wire up the amp and play some music so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. This video isn't a complete tutorial on how to build the amplifier, but I wrote an article on the Circuit Basics blog that has everything you need to build the amp. There are also links to the schematic and PCB layout so you can edit them if you want to change something. I'll put a link to that in the description. Okay, I drew up the schematic in Easy EDA, so I'll go there and log in. I'll go here to the My Projects page, and here's a list of all my projects. We made tutorials and videos on all these amps, so check out the Circuit Basics blog and our YouTube channel if you want to see those. Alright, here's the project for the TDA 2003 stereo amp. Here's the schematic, and the PCB. Clicking on Open in Editor will bring up the schematic editor. This is where I drew up the schematic. This is a stereo amplifier, so here's the left channel, and here's the right channel. Both channels are identical. Let's get a closer look at this. I'm going to export the schematic as a PDF. You can also export it as a JPEG or SVG file. Okay, so here we have the positive audio input. This is the left channel schematic, so there's only one input. Here's the audio output. This will go to the positive wire of the left speaker. And here's the positive voltage supply. The TDA2003 can be powered by anything from 8 volts to 18 volts DC. Then there are five different components that connect to ground. This is basically the same schematic as the one in the datasheet, except I added a couple of extra components to help reduce noise. This resistor, R9, prevents a really loud buzzing sound when there's no audio source connected. This capacitor, C15, filters radio frequency interference that can be picked up by the audio input cable. The gain of the amplifier can be set by changing the values of these resistors, R1 and R2. Use this formula to calculate the gain you'll get from a particular resistor combination, or you can rearrange the formula to solve for one of the resistances at your desired gain setting. The amp has a low-pass resistor capacitor filter at the output that sets the upper frequency of the amplifier's bandwidth. The values of C6 and R4 determine the frequency at which the filter starts attenuating the output. That frequency is known as the cutoff frequency, F sub C. The cutoff frequency can be calculated with this formula. Resistance is in ohms and capacitance is in farads. These capacitors, C3 and C7, are the power supply decoupling capacitors. Power supply decoupling capacitors filter noise from the power supply and provide a reserve supply of current to the amp when the output current exceeds the current supplied by the power supply. C4 is the output capacitor. Larger values of C4 will improve the bass response. 1000 microfarads is a good compromise between sound quality and cost, but you can go up to 2000 microfarads or even larger if you want. C5 and R3 form what's called the Zobel network. The purpose of a Zobel network is to prevent oscillations that can occur from the inductance of the speaker driver and speaker wires. It's also an RC filter that filters out radio interference that can get picked up by the speaker wires. Like the output filter, you can calculate the cutoff frequency with the same FC equation. Okay, now let's have a look at the PCB. If you're using Easy EDA, you can find your project files over here in this drop down menu. Just click on My Projects and you'll see a list of all your projects. Here's my TDA 2003 project, here's the schematic file, and here's the PCB file. Let's open this up. Alright, so this is the PCB editor. This is where you do all the design and editing of your PCB layout. I have a link to this PCB project file in the blog post, so check that out if you want to edit this. 
I'm all finished routing everything, so I just want to show you all the parts of the layout. But it's a little risky to review everything here. I don't want to accidentally change anything. This is where EasyEDA's GURB reviewer comes in handy. That'll let us look at the PCB layers without being able to modify anything. To get to the GURB reviewer, click up here on the Fabrication Output button, and you'll be taken to the order page. If you're ordering a PCB, this is where you can specify the number of layers, the order quantity, PCB thickness, color, surface finish, and copper weight. You can also download the Gerber files if you want to etch the PCB yourself. But for now, we just want to look at the PCB layout, so I'll open up the Gerber viewer. So we're looking at the top layer of the PCB now. We can also switch to the bottom view. Over here on the left is where you can toggle on or off the different Gerber files. This view is good for checking the PCB for any traces or through holes that are too close together. I'll just turn all these back on, and then we can check out how I designed the layout. I'll just zoom in here for a closer look. All right, both channels are on this PCB, so there's no need to build separate boards for each channel. Up here is the left channel TDA2003. Over here is the right channel TDA2003. Both chips are placed right up against the edge of the PCB. That way the PCB doesn't get in the way when you attach the heatsink. The amp is basically divided in two, with the left channel on the left side and the right channel on the right side. Here's the terminal for the right channel's audio input. All of these terminal footprints are for quarter-inch spade terminals, but if you want to use a different type, it's easy to change the footprints in the PCB editor. Here's the terminal for the left channel's audio input. This is the terminal for the audio input ground. This will connect directly to your audio input cable ground. This is the negative power supply terminal. This is the positive power supply terminal. And these are the audio output terminals for the right channel. They connect to your right channel speaker. And here are the left channel audio output terminals. Here are the power supply decoupling capacitors for the right channel, and the power supply decoupling capacitors for the left channel. Notice how they're placed right up against the amplifier chips. That reduces resistance and inductance in the traces leading up to the power pins, and allows current to flow to the chip better. Okay, now let's get a look at the bottom side. So now the right channel is on the left side, and the left channel is on the right side. The bottom layer has a single ground plane that's been split up to separate the different ground paths. This is known as a star ground. It prevents high currents from the power supply and audio output from flowing through the low current input circuitry. It's mainly a way to prevent noise. All the grounds eventually connect at the negative power supply terminal and input ground terminal, which are right here. This is where the audio input ground terminal connects to the ground plane, and this is where the power ground terminal connects to the ground plane. These are the audio output ground terminals for each channel. The ground pins of the two TDA2003s connect right here. Here are the grounds for R8 and R3 of the Zobel networks. These are the grounds for the 100 microfarad power supply decoupling capacitors, C7 and C10. These are the grounds for the 100 nanofarad power supply decoupling capacitors, C3 and C9. These are where the input resistors, R10 and R9, connect to ground. These are the 680 picofarad input filter capacitors, C15 and C17. And these are the grounds for R2 and R7, the gain setting resistors. Okay, that's about it for the PCB. Now I'm going to wire everything up and play some music. If you want to order this PCB, this is where you do it. Just click here on Save to Cart. I ordered five of these PCBs, and the cost came to about $17. And they came about 10 days later. All the traces are precise, and the surface is nice and shiny. And there's no mistakes that I could find. I'm really happy with the quality. This PCB is a little bit different from the one I just showed you. After I got this one, I made a few improvements to the board. They're mostly the same, but the terminal labels on this one are a little bit different. But the layout that's up on Easy EDA now is the most current version. So this is the assembled amplifier uh, attached to a CPU heatsink I found in an old desktop computer.
Notice here I'm using insulating pads between the chip and the heatsink. That's to avoid hum from ground loops, since the metal tabs on the chips are connected internally to the ground pin. So here are the spade terminals for the audio output. There's the left channel. And that's the right channel. Here's the input ground, the power ground, the positive voltage terminal, and the right and left positive audio input terminals. This is the input jack I'll be using. It's a stereo 3.5 millimeter TRS socket. There's one colored wire for each channel and a black wire for the ground. The speakers I'm using are little 6 ohm bookshelf speakers. This is my power supply. It's a 12 volt 400 milliamp DC wall plug that I took from an old electric shaver. I'll start by connecting the power supply wires. I've labeled each wire with plus or minus signs. The positive wire connects to the positive power terminal. The negative wire connects to the negative power terminal. Now I'll connect my left channel speaker. The positive wire goes to the out L plus terminal. and the negative wire goes to the out L minus terminal. Now I'll do the same for the right channel speaker, connecting it to the right channel output terminals. Now I'll connect my input socket, the black wire is the audio input ground, so I'll connect that to the in minus terminal on the amplifier. The yellow wire is the left audio input, so I'll connect that to the left input terminal. And the green wire is the right audio input, so that goes to the right input terminal. Now I'll plug in my input cable. Then I'll plug in the power supply. And that hum you hear is normal when the source isn't connected. When I plug the audio source in, the hum will go away. If you touch the input plug, you should hear a buzzing sound. That's normal too. Okay, let me start some music here. So there you go. Sounds pretty good. Can't hear any distortion. The volume's pretty good. I actually had to turn it down there at the beginning. After your amp's been playing a while, you want to check the heatsink to make sure it's not getting too hot. Okay, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you liked it and got something useful out of it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you liked the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. And if you know anyone else that would like it too, feel free to share it. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye bye.